Say your ship blew up. You're stuck on a planet. You could backspace. But don't. Don't backspace unless you're stuck in a rock. Don't backspace unless you're stuck in a door. You'll thank me later. If you backspace... If you backspace, you are taking away gameplay memories that you will cherish for a lifetime. If you're stuck on a planet or a moon, you could easily backspace and go back to your easy hab on Everest or Port Alisar, wherever. But if you go here in this screen and you make yourself a beacon and you make a personal transport and then you go to destination, and then you go to um, Everest Harbor. You pick Everest Harbor because you can get your you can get a new ship there, right? You can pull your ship out, and then you enter a dollar amount, five thousand or ten thousand, and somebody in the server is going to see that. And you hit broadcast beacon, they're going to see it, and they're going to want to come be a hero to you. They're, one, they're going to come pick you up. And you're going to get into their ship. And you're going to tell them about your story. What happened to you? Did you crash? Did someone come and blow up your ship? And, th and they thought they killed you, but they didn't. What happened? What's your story? You could tell that to the person who picked you up. But if you backspace, you got nothing to tell nobody. Don't backspace. Create gameplay. Create memories. Use this beacon. You won't be sorry. What is going on, guys? Thank you so much for coming back to Cobra TV. I have been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, a tutorial video, kind of. I don't know if I would really call it a tutorial. How about we call it... Uh, it I mean, essentially, it is a tutorial, but a helpful guide on just the beginning, just starting out. Uh, I see a lot of people asking questions about these same issues I had when I first started playing Star Citizen. So, um, I decided, you know, let's uh, let's do something for all the new people that are getting Star Citizen. Um, and not to mention, if you haven't gotten Star Citizen and you clicked on this video to get a good look at the game, uh, which we're going to show and do the tutorial here in a minute, uh, and uh, to see what it looks like, see how it plays, <clears throat> Please see my rest of my videos. I show how it's played. I show how much fun you can have. I don't do a whole lot of tutorial videos or ship tours or, or anything like that. I just play the game and I have fun. So uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Join uh, this awesome community here that we're building. And uh, possibly join our org. We have over a thousand members now to our org. But if you haven't bought Star Citizen yet, there is a referral code down below um, and that referral code will get you 5,000 starting UEC okay uh, now there is money that you get with some of these packages um, but it's like only a thousand if you use my referral code and then come here and purchase your game package uh, which let me put it on the screen here and then you come here and purchase your game package at robertspaceindustries.com uh, through my referral code, then you will get 5,000 extra starting UEC. And if they ever wipe the game, you will always start off with the 5,000 UEC that you got from my referral code. So let's take a look at the game packages before we get into the tutorial for anybody that maybe came here and does not own the game. Getting a game package can be confusing. And I'm not going to get into the conversation of melting and exchanging and what's better to get to melt and to upgrade with LTI and tokens and all this, all this craziness that makes my head spin. I'm here to talk about what's fun, right? What is fun? What, what do you want to get that's fun to get into the game? There's like this little mini game where people get, <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with it. I just, it makes my head spin. There's this little mini game where people get uh, ships and then they melt it. Melting is when you go into your account and you go to your hangar and you click exchange and you give the ship back for money and you can keep that money into your bank account to purchase other ships, all right? We're not going to get into any of that today. We're going to do a beginner's tutorial and we're going to tell you 
I, I'm going to give you my suggestion on game packages to get based on fun. All right. So you got game packages here, and it shows you a couple things. Here's ships, standalone ships that you could purchase. Um, <clears throat> but what we're going to do, as soon as you go to spaceindustries.com, uh, you're going to land on a screen like this. It's going to look like this. And what you're going to do from there is right at the top, uh, you're going to hit Pledge Store. Now, I would do this with my referral code. Everything through the referral code. And it's going to cause you to create an account. And once you create that account, then come here to Pledge Store. That way, you don't accidentally purchase a package without the referral code and you miss out on the 5,000 UEC. Right. So, after we click Pledge Store, you're going to come down to this screen right here and we're going to click, click uh, View All Game Packages. And this is going to give us the entirety of everything that's available to purchase. Now, we're going to go over this. Uh, and I'm going to spend probably 5 to 10 minutes on this. Uh, so if you want, you could just skim through the video, go to where you see gameplay, and that's where we're going to get started on the tutorial. I'm also going to show you what each of these ships that I suggest, uh, not every one of them, but the ones that I suggest, I'm going to show you what they look like in the game uh, in my hangar uh, before we get started. So this is the Avenger Titan. Um, and real quick, uh, well, no, yeah. Okay, so this is the Avenger Titan. Um, this is the one that I highly suggest. It's not my top suggestion, but it's the one that I I highly suggest. I usually say this first to people, but then when they say, but what do you really think? Then I tell you what I, number one top suggestion, right? And I'll, I'll tell you what that is. Uh, so the Avenger Titan starter pack, $65. Um, so let's go to more info here. We're going to go to more info, and uh, it's going to tell us all about it. So we get an air, air review hang. You get the hangar, so you can look, you know, get this big hangar. I don't know what they're for. Um, six months insurance on this. Now, the insurance doesn't mean a darn thing right now. Uh, the game's still in alpha, so none of us have to deal with insurance. And none of us are really clear on what's going to happen to your ship if you don't have insurance once the game is fully released. I don't think you're going to lose your ship 100%. I think it has something to do with expediting, uh, coming, uh, you know, getting uh, your ship back in a stock and not having your upgrades that you put into it. I don't know. There's a lot more research that I have to do into that. Um, but I do know this company's not going to take away stuff from you, right? <clears throat> so, but the insurance, uh, people like to make sure that they get better insurance. Um, and you could do that by purchasing standalone ships to have LTI uh, and stuff like that. So, and then upgrading to another ship with that. See, that's the melting game that I'm talking about. I And I don't want to get into it. I just, it whew, makes me confused. So you get the Star Citizen digital download. You get the game, right? And you get starting money 1,000 UEC. Now, when you use my referral code, you're going to get 6,000 UEC. Um, with with this ship and with my referral code, right? With this ship package. This is the one that I highly suggest. It can run cargo. It can carry boxes. It can fight. It's a good fighter. Um, it is a really amazing ship. Really fast. It can, can, You can control it very easily. All around, great, great ship. Highly suggested. But real quick, let's go down and talk about the basic packages. Now, this is... Ooh, this is the Mustang. Ah, this is the Mustang. It comes with a loner ship, the Aurora. Now, the reason why it does that is because the Mustang cannot carry boxes. It does have a small cargo area not to walk around in, but one that it, you could load cargo into like when you're doing trading. You can't get to it. It's just there, right? Um, so all it is is a cockpit, and that's it. Um... It does come with the Aurora as a loner so that you could do box delivery missions. I still suggest the Aurora over the Mustang, and I'm not talking about melting and stuff like that. So, uh, because the, um, the Aurora that comes with the Mustang is a loner, and I cannot give you an honest answer how long that loner is going to stay there with the Mustang package. I don't know the answer to that, so I can't, I cannot suggest this as a game package to purchase. And trust me, you're going to want to do box delivery missions. They are fun, right? So here's the Aurora. This is the one 
where I would basically say, have you done research on Star Citizen? Are you sure you've not watched enough videos that you want to get into it? Are you aware of the bugs? If they say, um, no, you know, I, I, I'm still, I don't know really. I haven't done that much research, but I want to play it. I want to get in. I would suggest the Awara. And if they've done their research, they want to go in. I suggest the Avenger Titan, right? So this is a good ship. If you want to get in to test it out, you could upgrade this ship. And here we go. Talking about upgrades to a better ship once you get in, right? Uh, I did. And I tell you what, I missed my Awara. So much so that I went back and bought a standalone Aurora ship. Okay, so uh, it's a good ship. I love it. Um, then we got the uh, the Pisces down here. The Pisces, you can't go wrong. If you're afraid of flying and afraid of crashing, the Pisces is a good ship. Now, they're changing flight mechanics, so I don't know if what I'm about to say is going to stay. But the Pisces is a very controllable ship. It stops on a dime. It's great on moons. Um, but again, they're with the next update, they're changing the entirety of uh, flight mechanics. So I don't know if that statement's going to stand. Um, this one here is a Mustang, and uh, you get the Star Citizen game that we're about to play here in a second. And you get Squadron 42, which is going to be the uh, the single-player campaign game that they're coming out with. Uh, here's a, uh, the Avenger Stalker. Um, another version of the award with the squadron 42 uh so okay let me get into where this is a good ship if you want to spend 125 dollars uh freely answer well, you know what don't get this absolutely what right now don't get it <laughs> i'm glad i caught myself for some reason we get one of these in our inventory for free for right now it's not going to stay there forever but let me tell you the number one top suggestion that I suggest you get with Star Citizen. The Cutlass Black. You cannot go wrong. This ship is amazing. It can do everything in the game. And it is a it's a tough, it's a tough cookie, right? So let's go to more info and let's check it out real quick. So um Avast, live outside the uh, live outside life, live outside the law with this fearsome fighter. Uh, the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass uh, become the scourge of the space la lanes as you make your living picking off uh, transports and shipping contraband. So don't let the description fool you. This is also an exploration ship. This is also a trading ship. This is also a box delivery ship. This is also a drop ship. This is also it's everything in the game. No matter what your play style is. If you want to go and just explore, this is her. This is the one you need to invite into your family. The Cuddy Black. You can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. But I I cannot uh, you know, suggest, I can't stress more that the Cuddy Black, the Cutlass Black, is the best ship to get. Um, so remember, Avenger Titan, can't go wrong with that. Aurora, you might want a better fighter if that's what you want to do, but it's an amazing ship. Uh, and then the um, the Pisces is good. Um, and then the Cutlass Black. Let's go ahead and jump into the game. We're going to go ahead and do a beginner start, and I'm going to try to bring up topics that are important for brand new players. Again, I'm not a novice at this game. But I do know the struggles. I do know what I struggled with. And I'm going to try and help you out on some of those. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Cobra. And now that you've got a better idea and our understanding on what the game packages are, and you hear what I suggest, uh, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. So let's say you went through with it, or let's say you already did uh, prior to uh, watching this video, and you've already got it. And let's say, you know, it seems a little bit confusing to you. We're going to go over just some basic things that can help you get started inside Star Citizen. Let's get into it. All right, so here we are in the main menu. So when you did everything, you used the referral code, you downloaded the game, you know, you, you got your game package, you downloaded the game, and you log in, you're going to see this screen right here. And over here on the, on the uh, right-hand side is going to be the friends. When you add friends to the game, 
they're going to show up right there. Um, and then down, you're going to have notifications. These notifications can be uh, someone sent you an invite, someone uh, rejected an invite, uh, somebody sent you a friend request. Uh, you can um, rejoin a server that you uh, crashed from, Some stuff like that, rejoin session. So those are the notifications. You can clean those up. Um, and I got a lot of friends I got to go through and a lot of contacts to go through and accept. Um, a lot of people, uh, they send me friend requests while I'm playing and it's hard to keep up. Um, so that's why they're, they're down there. I'm not ignoring you. Uh, please don't think I'm ignoring you. Um, so let's go ahead and go over what these are. So this is universe. This is star Marine and this is arena commander. Universe is where we all play. It is the persistent universe that everything happens in. It is uh, where you get the 50-player lobbies and soon to be a lot more people. Um, and you get <clears throat> the shenanigans that can happen. This is where you trade. This is where you become rich. This is where you explore. This is where you go out and and, and just exist. Star Marine is like a, it's like a shooter game. You know, it's like a PvP one-on-one or a deathmatch uh, conquest type gameplay. Uh, that's Star Marine. It's good to have fun, play with your friends. It's really fun. Arena Commander has raising. It has PvP dogfighting. It has swarm uh, where you can get together with your friends and you could do swarm battles. Uh, this is bothering me. Let's just put it on a solid blue. I like blue. It's bothering. It was blinking and it was like shining in my eyes. And I'm like, ah. Okay, so Arena Commander is uh, that. It's um, it's fun. It really is. It's super fun. But today we're going to be focusing on Universe. Down here you got things here. You got things like friends, notifications. Uh, and I guess you could like make these disappear. Boom. Like that. So they don't show up on stream. They can put it back. Right? And then uh, you got Quick Game, which is something you don't want to do. None of us want to do that. Uh, and then you got options. Options is going to take you to game settings, graphics, audio controls, key bindings. This is super important. This is going to help you a lot, right? Um, so this is for flight. If you want to be, if you want to look for something on foot, you could switch it down here to foot, um, and and then go over the key bindings. You, you'll probably be using this quite a bit in in the uh, in the beginning. Game settings. One of the things that I want to do is I want to turn on hints because hints is very important. I would keep it on hints for a little while and uh, until you start to learn about the game. So keep it on hints. Hints are going to show up down below. It's going to give you useful information. So that's all this. You could check your uh, your settings here. Uh, I've got my quality set on very high. You could change that um, by going down here. Uh, you got other uh, settings for V-Sync and stuff like that. Brightness, uh, the gamma. And then you got your audio where you can turn up and down your volumes. Uh, and then, of course, your controls where you can map certain things. Um, I think you can do that here in key bindings. And then your uh, FOIP, which you set your microphone up in here. And then um, you can calibrate your, your camera. You could put your camera right in front of your face and literally have your game character's mouth and face react the way yours is in real life. So you could use uh, do that by uh, cl clicking yes and then um, calibrating. So let's back out of that and let's go into universe. So here, when you click this, you're going to see multiple places. I think you're going to see New Babbage, Lorville, and Area 18, three major cities inside Stanton. So when you when you pick one, what's the easiest one to get out of? Uh, they're all pretty time consuming to get out of. Uh, let's see, Area 18, Lorville, New Babbage. Uh, New Babbage is the newest. Uh, they're all relatively pretty much the same. You got to take a train to get to the spaceport on either one. Uh, but New Babbage is such an amazing experience. Uh, but it is so far away from everything. Um, I miss when they used to let you start off at Port Alistar because that's where most of the action does happen. So I would say, you know, for the experience, let's start off at, go ahead and start off at New Babbage, right? Um, but I don't know where we're going to be starting today ourselves. I can't remember where I last landed. So let's go ahead and get into the Stanton system. And you could do your character creation. Uh, the way that works is you pick your character. And then you can uh, begin blending. Um, and go to 
let's see, begin blending. This is going to be the head. There's, you could spend so much time in here because there's so much that you could do. Um, there's so much that you can do. And, and to, to your, um, to your character, it's crazy. And here's like a randomizer. You could just randomize it and see what kind of things happen. Um, but we've already got our character set, so we're not going to create our character. So let's cancel and leave and just jump into the verse. So we're, you're going to click um, whatever you want to click. New Babbage Area 18, Lorville. And then I'm going to click wherever I, I was at last. Then you got cancel, visit location, or join friends. Uh, so we're just going to visit the location from here. Okay. Also, this is a good time to... Um, state that you should have your game installed on an SSD, not a hard drive, all right? When I first started playing this game, I had, even though I had an SSD in my computer, I had it installed on the hard drive on accident. Don't ask me how, that's me, I'm a noob. And uh, well, it didn't run very well. So it lagged a lot, it, um, it crashed a lot, and it took time, too much time, to, for things to load in the game. So I had to move it over to my SSD. So be sure that when you download the game or if you've already got it downloaded, be sure to make sure that it's on your SSD. So, all right, so if you end up picking Lorville, this is great because that's where we ended up uh, coming back to uh, Lorville. And it's, <laughs> it's an amazing place. So this is your easy hab. Let's go ahead and get out and we'll go over a few things. Uh, this is your easy hab. This is basically a respawn point. In the future, they're going to have it to where you can have your own apartment and you can decorate it. All these bare walls will have pictures on them, or however you want to uh, uh, go ahead and decorate it. Uh, but this is where you're going to respawn. Um, if you landed at Lorville, this is where you're going to respawn. If you landed at Area 18, you're going to respawn in a uh, easy hab of their own. And the same thing with uh, New Babbage. If you end up landing on Port Alisar, you will, you will respawn inside Port Alisar's Easy Hab and so on. So, um, to get, uh, let's go over a few things here real quick. This is beautiful, by the way. I love the piping, the industrial look of this place. So, F, the F key uh, on your keyboard, F, you could tap it like right here. It's called Inner Thought. Yeah, I know. No jokes. That's what they called it. They called it Inner Thought. So, uh, to use inner thought, you can either tap it if you're close enough to the object, or you can hold down and scroll through the different options that are on uh, uh, whatever object you're looking at. Um, this world is immersive, uh, so they try not to make anything like too menu-y. Uh, so if you're near the object, <clears throat> what you could do, uh, see there's the um, the hints I was talking about. Movement, press space bar to jump. Woohoo! This will also stand you up from a prone or crouch. So those hints are very important. Keep them on there. Um, it's good to get to know those. Uh, so we're going to tap F to get out, right? We're going to use inner thought by tapping F. We're not going to hold it down. Boom, the door opens. All right, we're going to go ahead and let it close. All right, and now we're going to use inner thought by holding down F. And there's only one option here, but there was more options you'd be able to go through them. So we're holding down F right now, and now we're going to use the left mouse button to click. And now we can get out. So this is the outer area of Lorville. And we're going to show you guys how to get out of here. And there's a big old window out here, and you can see the industrial, sprawling industrialness of Lorville. And these big fans, I love these big fans all over the place. Such a cool place. So if you spawned on the bottom floor in one of the easy halves down here, to get out, you gotta come upstairs. Luckily, we are we we spawned in the easy hab that was upstairs, and you come over to the elevator right here. Now, here's where you hold inner thought. Well, wait, not yet. When we get in the elevator, okay. When we get in the elevator, there's gonna be multiple choices uh, for for our inner thought selection for the uh, the floor we're going to. Blah. Okay. There we go. So now that you're in the elevator, what you're going to do is you're going to come over here. You're going to hold down. Now, if you click all these, you're going to end up going to all of them. Trust me. So we're going to go to the ground floor because all these other floors are other easy habs and other places people can spawn. Uh, so we're going to go to the ground, fo ground floor. And again, right now I'm holding F down as I speak. And I'm going to click the left mouse button uh, now that ground floor is highlighted. And we're going to go down. That is how you use inner thought. 
You use it for everything that you can interact with. And I'll, I'll give examples on when you could tap it. Uh, tap F instead of holding F. You can play the game however you want, though. Um, so, here, to get into uh, third person, you can hold F4. And you can hold F4, you, not hold F4, you tap F4. So, from first person, you tap F4, and you get this, uh, this shot right here. And if you hold Z, hold Z down to move your mouse button around, and you could go all the way around your character in a very cinematic mode. If you push F4 one more time, it puts you even further away from your character. Um, now we can even go further into this by if you hold F4 and scroll back on your mouse, you could go even further away from your character, right? And then you hold Z and then you can uh, move the camera around. Now we could go even further by if you hold F4 and you hit um, page down, page up and go even further away. Oh, we ran into a wall behind us. And then you could also use the arrow keys. You could use the home key to make it uh, cinematic. See how we just made everything just get real blurry. We don't want to mess around with any of that right now. And to, if, if you don't like it, you can hold F and hit the asterisk key on the numpad and it'll set it back to uh, default. So that's how you mess around with the camera angles, right? I, I normally love to play in uh, first person. I don't know why, I just do. If you have fines to pay, if you get tickets for um, trespassing, if you get tickets for uh, collision or uh, improper parking, impoundments, you can come here and just uh, click log in as user and pay your fines. Here's a delivery box. We'll be discussing those here in a little bit. Um, but I'll show you how to get from the Easy Hub. We just took the elevator. We went out of the... Look at this. Look at this site over here. Look at that. Watch the dirt fall. That's amazing. Okay, so let's go on um, up the stairs here. We're going to take a train to Tisa Spaceport where we're going to get our ship. And I'm going to fly the ship that I suggest that you guys get. I'm going to take out the Cutlass Black. Did I go the wrong way? I did. Went the wrong way. Is there somebody near me? Ah, uh, he went the wrong way too. See, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that almost went the wrong way. Okay, he's not a talker. So you just keep following, following the wall like a mouse. You know what I mean? Transfers to the perimeter, spaceport, and industry lines. And we're gonna go straight down here. There's another uh, delivery box. Welcome uh, to Metro Center. Transfers unit. to the perimeter, spaceport. Tisa, and there's signs all over the place. If you get lost, use the signs. All right. What we're going to is Leavesden, uh, uh, Tisa Spaceport, and uh, that's where we're at right now. Oops, can we make it? Can we make it? Can we make it? We made it. Is he gonna make it? He made it. Woo, you made it, buddy. That was close. You're like Indiana Jones there for a second. And now we're taking a real train that is uh, really going around the map. And if you take one of the gates, one of the trains that, oh my God, one of the perimeter line, look at this. If you take one of the perimeter line or perimeter loop or whatever it's called, uh, it's a really long train ride and you get to go all the way around Lorville. There's the sun. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. I bet you want to get Star Citizen now, don't you? Look, there's a plane land. Or, I mean a plane. <laughs> I said plane. Look, there's a, um, it looks like a freelancer. It's landing right there in front of us. There's a, that's a player. I don't know what that is. Maybe that was a player, guys. All right, it's right behind me. So we're going to make a right turn, and we're going to go down here to... Uh... He went the wrong way. That poor guy. Just follow it around to the left. 
there's more pay stations to pay your fines. And here is the main room. So you see how I'm running really fast? So you have a middle mouse wheel. Um, and if you scroll that all the way down, just keep going, 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 going. You end up walking real slow like this. And if you scroll it up, you increase your speed of your sprint. Of your, you know, your little sprint here. Right? And you scroll it back, scroll it back, and he starts to walk again. Um, furthermore, if you uh, hold shift down while you're running, you get to run even faster by holding shift. So that, that handles all the running. How you doing, buddy? Um, and here's where you get your ship out. So this is probably one of the first things you're going to want to do. You want to get your ship out so you can take a look at it, take it out for a spin. But what do you do when you get it? Like, what do you do when you get in your ship? Where do you go? Well, we're going to take care of that, too. Hangar 7. Remember that, right? It said Hangar 7. Half the time I get back, after I get on the elevator, I forget what hangar it was. But we're not going to forget today. Hangar 7 is where we're going. So let's go ahead and call the elevator. Hold F down for inner thought. Look for Hangar 7. Click it with the left mouse button. And we're on our way to our Cutlass Black. We are on our way. Alright, here we are. Now we're going to walk nice and slow to it. Let's walk nice and slow. Here she is, guys. The best starter package you can get. The best one. Right now. Since the Freelancer is in your inventory as soon as you get the game, uh, this is the best ship that you can get. And it's big. Look how big it is. Big, big ship. And you remember how we did it in the hangar? How to get inside? That's right. So we're going to go down to the back and we're going to hold inner thought. Or you could just click F. Right there. See how it opens up? So we didn't even use the mouse, the mouse button. And then you can go over here. If you're standing close enough to it, all you got to do is click the F. You don't have to hold it down and hover and click F. I mean, click your left mouse. You can just click it. I've gotten into a habit of just clicking the F uh, instead of holding the inner thought. Sometimes I, I still do it. These doors here are automatic. You don't have to use inner thought for it. They are motion uh, detect detected. Uh, and here they are. Here's the beds. Here's the gun rack. So here, let me uh, show you the gun rack. Oh, where, where I can't because we're in armistice zone. So you see those symbols up at the top? The symbol with the bullet means you cannot pull a weapon out. You're in armistice zone. And the uh, satellite symbol means that there is a comma ray. That comma ray is recording all crimes. So if you commit a crime, uh, while that symbol is there, you will be held accountable for that crime that you committed. And there is prison now. So you got to be careful. you got to be a good citizen. However, when bad people want to do bad things, there is a way to go to the comma ray out there in space and take that comma ray down and they can get you. Right? They can come and kill you and they won't be held accountable for their crime. So whenever you're in a place you know there's supposed to be a comma ray, where if you're trading or something like that, and you don't see one, not a good time to be there. So let's go ahead and get in the sea. <laughs> now when you get into your, uh, your ship, there's a number of different ways that you can start your ship up. So we can go down here and we can hit flight ready. We can power on. Uh, we could engines on. We could do it all separately, right? Um, if we wanted to. Or you could hit flight ready and get it all turned on all at once. Everything's ready. Um, what we are going to do, and there's a open exterior. We can open up every door right now. Uh, by using this, um, you can lock and unlock your ship for people that are not in your party. They could get in your ship if you unlock it. Um, or you can keep it locked and nobody that's not in your party can get into your ship. Right, um, but there are hotkeys for all of these things that that we see that we can interact with. There's hotkeys like the 
open uh, exterior. Watch this. So we're going to go out in third person by hitting F4. And I'm going to open up my doors by hitting K. Watch this. All the doors are coming open. There we go. Perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, close the doors. By hitting K again. All right. So that's that. To get the ship turned on, flight ready, without having to use inner thought, um, hit R. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake interplanetary craft. Nice. Your systems are online. Getting to know your ship is very, very important. Um, it's one of the things that I struggled with when I first started playing. The hotkeys are very important. P will control the the letter P will control your um, whether your your weapons are on or not. So we could hit P right now and turn everything off. Weapons offline. So now there are no weapons online whatsoever. Um, so let's go ahead and turn the weapons back on by hitting P. Weapons online. To um, turn off your engine only and leave the power on, you could hit the I I key. Engines offline. So now the engines are off. To turn the engines back on, you could hit I again. Engines online. Okay, to turn off your shields, as you can see, the shields there on the MFD, right here. Shields are on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn off the shields by hitting this button here, O. Shield system offline. Now those shields are going to slowly start to dissipate. See, they're going away. So we're going to go ahead and turn them back on before they go completely gone. Shield system online. Because your shields take a while to generate. Your shields take a while to warm up and get started all the way. Um, there are a number of things that you could do here. Um, if you go into uh, this MFD over here and you go to guns, you've got these set. These are your left and right mouse buttons, one and zero. So what I'd like to do is make these both zero. And now when I, sh when I click the left mouse button, all of my guns shoot with one ma mouse button. I don't have to use two, right? Um, and then you could go into... Let's go into uh, power. And then you can go into items. Here, you can overclock some of your stuff. So uh, let's say you want to overclock your shields or you want to overclock uh, your your laser repeaters. You can click overclock um, it right here. You can overclock the scorpion uh, weapons that I've got. So, and then to not overclock it, you know, to un-overclock it, you just click it again. Uh, you could do that for a number of different things in your ship to root more power to one thing or not. Uh, so over here, there's hotkeys for this, but I'm not well aware of all the hotkeys. Uh, you can route more power to weapons or shields or other things here. Um, or keep it right there in the middle. To get out of here, there's two different ways we could do it. The way that I like to do it is I like to come down to one of my MFDs and I like to click menu and go to my comms and then go to Lorville Landing Services and call that. So now they're going to be opening up the doors above us. Look at that. Also, keep in mind, right now, you've got, you probably have 5,000 UEC if you just turned on Star Citizen for the very first time. We're going to show you how to make some money real quick. And there we go. All right. So now we're going to, if you want to, if you, if you don't, make sure you're, uh, see this little circle in the center? Make sure it's in the center right there. Uh, and you have auto gimbals on your ship. So one of the things to do. To activate that is to hit R twice until you see that circle. See those dotted circles? It's really hard to see. You can get those dotted circles around. That means now your weapons are auto gimbled. Uh, you could use that by hitting R. Once your ship is started, that's what R turns into. Before your ship is started, R turns into flight ready. Okay, so to lift off, see this over here? Um, it's the uh, the... Look in the center of the screen. I'm moving that bar up and down. That is like a speed limiter, or you're you're telling how much power to give to your thrusters. Therefore, you go faster, slower, um, 
when you're taking off, I like to keep it down at a very low level, like right about there. Um, just in case something bad happens when we're taking off. But to take off, all we're going to do is we're going to hit space bar. Okay. There we go. We're up. Now, I, I don't know why I went crazy like that. Normally, you don't. Normally, you don't. So, if you are a little bit afraid, you can go out into um, third person. And and you, you if you hold Z down, you can look all the way around the camera angle right here. Right? So, our landing gear is down. We don't need the landing gear down anymore. So, we're going to hit N to get that landing gear up. And it might be a good idea if we're using our VTOL engines. We could hit J. So that's probably a good idea to get out of the system right now. So let's go ahead and get out. Or we're gonna get out of the, you know, the landing pad, the hangar. And we're gonna go above these signs. See these floating signs that are here? I'm holding down spacebar right now. We're gonna get above these signs because uh Lorville doesn't like you breaking the law around here. They will blow you up. Whenever you come into Lorville, make sure you come in over top of those floating signs. You understand me? That is important. Come right here in the middle. See how it's a big rectangle? Yeah. Come right in here in the middle. On this, on that, see where that T-Sport, space board sign is? You got to come in over here, all right? So, now we don't need our VTOL engines anymore. We can go straight up. So what we're going to do is we're going to click, uh, we're going to hit J. There we go. And we're going to go back into first person. We're going to tilt up. Now there's a really cool feature called cruise control. And if you hit C, you get a little arrow up there next to your speed limiter. And you can control how much speed by going all the way up or going down. When you're in a dogfight, you want to stay where, where that uh, before it turns red, right? If you go up too far, it starts turning red. That means you start losing control of your ship. Uh, you, you lose the ability to control your ship uh, sharply. So we're going to get out in the atmosphere so we can plot a course. And I'm going to show you how to use quantum drive. That right there, the altitude is, is going to disappear once you leave the atmosphere. So we're going to keep on going until the altitude disappears. And we can also have fun by taking a look. Take a look back. Look at that. That's where we came from. Look at that sight right there. Huh? Look at that. Now do you want to get the game? All right, so let's go straight up so that way we can get out faster. There we go. All right. This is the Cutlass Black, guys. Best starter ship that you could that you could spend your money on. Okay, so we haven't left the atmosphere just yet. We're still there. All right, well, now we've left the armistice zone. Now we can shoot our weapons to see what they look like. So let's go ahead and try that. Look at that. Let's go in uh, third person. Woo, look at that. Nice. Look at that. I start shooting my weapons and it says ship combat down there. It's beautiful. Now, on the middle of the dashboard here, you can see that circle. That's going to tell us when... Uh, that's our radar. It's going to tell us when ships are in a vicinity. And, uh-oh, it looks like I am low on water. Didn't realize that. Uh, the bottom hand of the screen over here is your water, your food levels, which they're low too and you've got your oxygen level. So those are very important to keep an eye on. I myself, I might have some water. Uh, so let's go ahead. Well, I'll show you where to get it, actually. Um, we're going to take a trip over to Port Alizar. Actually, no. Let's go and... Okay. You're, <laughs> you're in a ship, right? But now you don't know where to go. Like, where do I go? Well, let's go ahead and pick a place to go. And we could do that by playing the game. So we're going to take a mission or two. And we're gonna go to delivery. Now we could go over the Moby Glass. Let me let me tell you how to get to the Moby Glass. You could hit F1. Boom. Poops out this Moby Glass, which is like a, a holographic iPhone. And uh, down here you've got uh, Comlink, which will show you a bunch of stuff. 
It'll show you uh, friends and pending on, on the left side. It'll show you the global chat in the middle. Um, if somebody calls you or hails you, they will show up right here in the middle uh, with a text chat and a video chat. And over here are all the people that are in the server right now. Um, there, now it says there's 37 of uh, 47. I don't know what that number means. Uh, 37 of 47. I don't get that. Uh, but these are all the people. You can um, right click and invite them to party. You can send a friend request. Uh, you can mute them if they're talking. Um, you can do a lot of stuff. But, um, okay, so we're going to have to open up F1. And down here you've got, here's where you can customize your ships, which we'll get into in another future video. Uh, and this is where you can customize what you're wearing. This is going to be changing soon because they're going to limit what we can carry on us. Right now, you can carry a thousand med pens on you and equip them uh, by going to utility, going to your uh, your uh, consumable medicals, which uh, we've got 58. So somehow, somewhere in some weird place, we got 58 med pens, right? And to, to equip them, say it wasn't equipped, to equip them, you, uh, you, you go to utility, you click on consumable medical, and then you click equip, and then you can click save, save changes. Boom. Now you got it on you. Now you can hit C whenever you get damaged. Um, and then we've got armor. This is where all the armor that you purchase in the game, you could change. Here's helmets. Here's torso, arms, and legs. And you can mix up armor like crazy. This right here that you're looking at is the Cobra Force uniform. Uh, it's what we wear as an org. We got over a thousand members now. Uh, so we're growing. I never thought we'd get that far. I'm really excited. I just wanted to just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, so right now I'm going to stay in my Cobra uniform. But if I wanted to change, I could go to this, change my helmet. See that? Um, I could change my torso by going to, uh, let's see. Mm, I can go to there. See, you can mix and match everything. Everything. You could look completely unique. You can go and buy all kinds of different parts of, of armor, arms, legs, and just mix and match it and look completely unique. Uh, but we're not going to hit save changes because I'm happy with what I got on. So uh, the other thing is here's the star map. It's going to be right next to the character uh, uh, character avatar screen, uh, button. Uh, if you don't see anything, that's fine. Um, hit this plot uh this bullseye symbol this ridic ridicule up here click that and then start uh and then you could right double click uh left and right right double click left will get you in zoom in uh double click right will get you to zoom out or you could use your mouse button or your middle mouse, mouse wheel to scroll in and out so we're not going to be going anywhere just yet because we still have to find out where we're going you could go to anywhere you want. Uh, we could go. We could just pick some place to go and like, off and explore. But I want a reason. So this right here is your journal. This tells you all of the crimes that you've committed. Yes, I've committed quite a few crimes. Um, there is a criminal record. Well, there's nothing on my criminal. Oh, that's because I erased it. Never mind. Um, it'll also give you like uh, your journal will tell you things like. Uh, like jurisdiction R Corp. It'll tell you about R Corp. It'll tell you about what the crimes are that you can, you know, the laws not to break. There are felonies, evading arrest, unauthorized computer access, harboring a fugitive. All these are real, right? And then you've got misdemeanors, uh, which they're just fines and stuff like that. So, and then you've got prohibited goods. Uh, so these are goods that you could pick up in the game to do missions. But if you happen to be in R Corp with these listed items you're gonna get in trouble right uh the class a controlled substances are slam and widow class b is uh, maze and neon these are drugs that are in the game um so there's a lot of information here in the journal to go over and read it's really fascinating um this i don't know what liveworks ar is i've never had to use it i never see anything here um this wrench when you're on a landing pad, you can, you can click that wrench and all these will be green and you'll be able to repair, restock, refuel hydrogen and quantum uh, fuel. So, but we're not on a pad right now, so we can't do that. So let's go ahead and click the last one here, 
which is going to be the contracts. Here's where we get our jobs because you are a freelancer. You are out in this verse trying to make a living. And you could do that by doing delivery, investigation, maintenance, bounty hunter, or mercenary missions. When you start your game, it's highly I highly suggest you click on mercenary, mercenary. You go down to where it says call to arms, click that, accept the offer, and then untrack it. What this does is if a player or an NPC tries to shoot you and they are red and you shoot at them, you will be paid for murdering them, right? You'll be paid and you won't get a crime stat. Remember, it's important to take the call to arms. All right. So now that we got that, oh, we didn't we didn't set ourselves a uh, set, set ourselves up with the job. So we're going to do a delivery mission on this run. And what we're going to do is show you just a a couple different things. Let's see. So this one's going to a pad locker, and we're going to be picking this up on her LT. Is there one closer at Everest Harbor? Um, let's see. They are FTL missions. That's right. So let's see. This one is going uh, her L2, her L3. Uh, Ida. Good. So we're going to pick that one up from Ida. Now, we just accepted a delivery mission. Right now, it's telling us that there's contact details. Here's what it's telling us: pick up location. The shipment is waiting for collection at HDMS Woodruff on Eda. So that means we got to go to a moon. Drop off location. Uh, it will need to be delivered to a landing pad locker in New Babbage. So we get to see what New Babbage looks like on this episode. Delivery window. Um, uh, I guess there's no delivery. Travel. Uh, all transportation needs uh, should be arranged by the courier. That means you. Um, since this route may take you through hostile areas, plan accordingly. Um, and remember that at FTL Courier Services, we always try our best to deliver the best. So it says pick up the shipment at HDMS Woodruff, which we're going to go do. Now, you can get really, really into this and start taking multiple missions. So let's say we get this one here. It's at her L3. We can accept it. Boom. Now we've got two box delivery missions. Right, we could go get those. These aren't the ones I suggest, though. Um, I wonder. No contracts available for personal, so I've got a good reputation, so I don't get the illegal missions right now. All right, so and then you got bounty hunter. Um, let's see, there is, there's a ten thousand UEC bounty on this uh, on this server right now. His name is Ugly Bert. So Ugly Bert is wanted. Just out of curiosity, we'll go ahead and we'll accept the, uh, we'll, we'll accept it. In order to get your bounty hunter license, you have to do what's called a pro tem. Uh, and you can get that by going all the way over to Crusader, which is over here. Let me show you on the map. Over here to Crusader. Come on over here. And normally this is where, I mean, I think you can get it everywhere. But if you're in the area near Port Alisar, which is right here. And, or if you're in the area of Crusader, the pro tem contract will show up. You just go kill a guy. It's an NPC and boom, you get your bounty hunter license. Now you'll be able to see player bounties, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and do this box delivery mission real quick. And um, we'll talk a little bit about making some money. All right, so first off, we're going to have to hit F. I don't want to confuse you right now. You get F2 to get right to your galactic map, or you can just hit F1 and go to that symbol right here and click that. Now, we're going to have to look on the map where our box is. Remember, it was on Eda. So we're going to go down here to Eda. And we're just going to click on Eda, and we're going to hit set route. And it's going to show up over here on the screen. Now, that might have more than one destination on there. See, right now, it just says Eda. But let's say there was an OM1. That means you have to take an orbital marker one to get around a particular area in order to have a straight shot to Eda. So always look when you set your when you plot your course to get to the place that you need to get to. Look at that and see if it says OM6, OM1. Um, because you might be like, well, how come I can't get to Eda? I can see it's right there, but I just can't get to it. They're like GPS directions. So make sure you pay attention under navigation mode. 
uh, and look and see what kind of steps are needed to get to the, your destination. Right now, it's easy. One, one step. Uh, so we're going to go down here. As you can see, we are also being highlighted not only by a triangle to get to uh, where we're supposed to point our ship to travel to, but we're also being highlighted by a mission marker, and that is our box. So I'm, I just pushed B. I tapped B while I'm staring at my location. Now it's spooling up my quantum drive. So you have a calibration, which is at the top of that circle in the middle, and then, or I mean the side of the circle, and then you have a spool, which is at the top of that circle. Sometimes you are in a ship, and they run both at two different speeds. So you might get the, uh, the calibration might, might finish before the spooling, and you, it might throw you off. You might be like, well, the calibration calibrated, but I can't go anywhere. Uh, so you have to look at that. Sometimes they're at two different speeds. Now that we are fully calibrated, our spooling is complete, I'm going to hold down the B button on the on the keyboard. And now I can release it. And now we're going into uh, quantum drop. And it says there, hold B to cancel quantum travel. If we want to, we can pull out into mid dead deep space, um, middle in the middle of nowhere. So the quantum travel is not, a, it's not a um, a loading screen. All right, here we are at Ida. So now we got to figure out where our package is at. Where's our package? It's right down there. So let's go ahead and uh, push B. And it looks like uh, we could quantum straight to it. If you're doing an illegal mission, you're going to have to manually fly all the way to that area. Uh, you won't be able to quantum travel to it. So let's go ahead and hold B now. And release B. Quantum drive is now Alright, and here we are, and it's straight ahead of us, so let's go ahead and fly. Let's say you didn't have a mission marker, right? There's two different ways that you can have a marker for where you want to go. Uh, if we didn't have a mission, that marker right there in front of us would have disappeared. Just completely vanished. You can go into your map, and you could find... HDMS and set a quantum beacon for it specifically. Um, right there. Or you can uh, spool up your quantum drive even though you're not going to use it and it'll show up in red saying that it is uh, uh, too close. Right? It'll see right there. Well, it did say it was too close a few seconds ago and then went away. Right there. Saying it's too close. And it also tells you how far away it is. So if you don't see a marker, you could use your quantum travel, uh, spool it up, and use it to see how far away you are and where it's at as you're flying towards it, like like this. But we don't need to in this case because we have a mission marker. Now, everybody think a lot of people on the outside think that flying in, in Star Citizen is dangerous. It's or hard. It's not. Flying in Star Citizen is not hard. At least right now. I don't know what the new flight model is going to be like. <laughs> in a couple weeks. Um, but as it stands right now, it's not hard. The, it's it's pretty much just... Move your mouse in the direction you want to go in. And you set your speed to however you want to go. Now, the what makes flying dangerous is not paying attention to your speed. Is not paying attention to what kind of planetary body you're on. Is it a moon? Does it have an atmosphere? Does it have low gravity? Uh, because if it doesn't, you're not going to be able to slow down real quick. Now, the the gravity on this moon doesn't seem to be too bad, but it is. I can, I can sense that it is low gravity, um, but not as bad as a place like Yila, Yella, or Selen. Those planets are real rough. So we're going to go ahead and land on one of these landing pads right here. And it doesn't look like there's anybody here. See on our radar? 
we would see if there was a ship here, even if they had their ship turned off. So we're going to put our landing gear down by hitting N. I see our landing gear is coming down. And we're also going to get our VTOL mode on to make it easier for us to uh, hover around and get a good landing spot. So we're going to land on the one straight ahead from us, right there. And I'm using WSAD to move around. Kind of tapping it. Kind of tapping it a little bit. And then, uh, so now that we're right over top of it, to go down, you're going to hit uh, use control. Right? So here we're going to go down. You don't want to slam down. Landing is complete. Now, you could do a number of things. You can uh, turn off your engines. Engines offline. And then get out of your seat. Um, or you can uh, turn everything off by hitting U. And that turns literally everything off. Not too smart to do. So I don't I don't suggest turning everything off. But since we already got it off, we may as well just go ahead and just leave it like that. Um, I suggest just turning off your engines and leaving your shields on. Your power and your shields on. So we're going to go inside here. We're going to pick up this box. And then we're going to take this one over to New Babbage. We're not going to do the other one. Look at that. Look at that. Unless you want to get it now. Look at that. They added some white. To my cutlass black and i'm i'm loving it i'm super happy they did that oh it's really important to shut your door and you might be noticing i was walking pretty slow there are massive winds and storms on hurston and if you're walking against the wind you can't run very fast i'm trying to run as fast as i can go okay well uh, the wind kind of went away all right, so let's go ahead and go in. Let's see, where do we got to go? Over here. See where it says pick up? Wow, look at that, guys. Doing box deliveries is, I suggest you do this first. Do box deliveries first. It really helps you understand the verse. It takes you to places. It gives you a tour on accident. It gives you a tour of, of the places and the sites and things to see and things to learn. Uh, it also helps you get to know how to use your ship. Um, and it gets you to have a better understanding about what moons have low gravity, what places have normal type of gravity. Um, the easiest moon to fly on is Damar. Its gravity is almost close to that of Hurston. Not quite, though, but almost. Um, so... Once you're in here, this is a trade terminal. This is where you can come and purchase goods at, for your ship. Um, we're not going to do that right now. Because right now we only have 5,000 credits, right? I mean, I've got more than that. But you probably only have 5,000 uh, UEC. So right here, we're going to go ahead and pick up. And it's going to give us our box. It's not going <laughs> to It's not going to give us our box. Let's try that again. It's right there. There we go. All right. Woo. Hey, buddy. You need to get some maintenance out here. Looks like... Uh, Something I can help you with. Yeah, your machine's not working very well. Hey, look. You can see our ship out the window. Let's check this out. Look at that. Let's see our ship out there. All right. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. To get the box, you could hold enter thought, which is F, and then just grab the box with your left mouse button. Um, now you could use enter thought to cycle this door while you're holding the box. Let's go ahead and we're going to use enter thought. We're going to hold it, open door. We still have our box in our hand. Now we're going to go inside. I'm going to show you the two different ways that we can, um, three different ways we can get this box. Onto the ship. So now, right now, it's in our hand. So we could hold F. I mean, gosh, hold on. Pick it up, you moron. Pick it up. So we could hold the left mouse button. I'm holding it down right now. Wait. Now I'm holding it down. And you could see it's highlighted. I could put it anywhere that it's showing up. Uh, I didn't push anything except for the left mouse button, right? So, my gosh, pick it up. Or you could hold enter thought 
you got drop and you got place. Both of these will get it down onto the floor. So you can hit place and now, uh, wait, hit place and you're still holding F at this moment. And now you can just uh, click the left mouse button and boom, it's down. So those are the many different ways that you can get the ship or the box on your ship. All right, so let's go ahead and get back in the ship. We'll take a trip on over to Microtech, deliver this box, and then uh, we'll talk about some other ways that you could start to earn more money in the verse uh, right away, very quickly. Hello and welcome aboard your Drake Interplanetary Craft. Your systems are online. All right, and let's go ahead and put up landing gear. Fix our VTOL. Aim straight up. Wait until we get out of the atmosphere. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh, somebody was giving away free money. Deck gun it. So I think we're, I think the moons aren't so picky about actually being out of the atmosphere in order to plot your course. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot anyway. Because there's no way that this moon has that big of an atmosphere. No way. Maybe. Okay, we're out anyway, we're out. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit F2 uh, to get to our map and we're going to scroll the middle mouse wheel backwards. And then we're gonna go up here to Microtech. See how there's a little, little symbol there? Like a little glowing diamond. Um, so we could double click on this Double click again. There we go. And it looks like the box is going to be delivered to... Where's it at? Microtech. Microtech itself. So we're going to click set course or set route. And uh, again, no OMs to take. So I'm going to turn off my cruise control by hitting C. There's Microtech right there. <laughs> All right, so we're coming up to Microtech right now. It's been a long trip. Happy to be here. And uh, our quantum drive is going to have to cool down for a little bit. And our location to drop off our box is right over there. See it? So we're going to spool up our quantum drive and we're going to have to wait. There we go. It's, it's all cooled down now. So now we can get over there easily and quickly. And we're, again, we're going to hold B. Quantum drive. This is going to take us into the main place in Microtech. It's called. It's a city called New Babbage. It's a beautiful city. This is a beautiful planet. And what a sight to behold. And these are some of the coolest missions. Being able to deliver boxes to the tops of these skyscrapers. All right, we've arrived. Is now off. So we can see right away where, where our box needs to be delivered to. You can always enjoy the scenery and go into uh, third person. Hold Z down, take a look around at everything. Just enjoy the sights. Just enjoy it all. It's so beautiful. But without my marker, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm going to go back into first person. Where are we going? Oh, I see it. I see it. We're going to have to get ourselves some water. You can get water at a lot of different places. Port Alisar, 
New Babbage here. We could get a landing pad, go inside the city. Uh, we could go to one of the places that they sell food and drinks and get some food and water. Uh, we're getting dangerously low, as you can see there on the on the side. So let's go on down here. Okay, so we're going to be landing on the top of this building right here. So let's go ahead and get our landing gear down. Put our VTOL engines on to make it easier for us to land. Down. VTOL is J. And just going to go down here nice and slow. I know, lady. And we're going to land. We're going to land right here. go so Weapons offline. let's go ahead and get out we're in armistice zone we don't have to worry about anybody uh being able to blow our ship up uh so let's go through the door let's get our box i want to open up this door and take a look at the view look at that look at that huh what what more could you ask for? Well, <laughs> I can ask for a lot more. That's a bad that's a bad quote. Okay. Um, let's close that up. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, open up a door. Oh my goodness, look at the snow piled up there. Ooh, it's storming. Okay. All right. Close the door. Hurry up and get inside. Oh, it's blowing me sideways. Look at that. I need a V8. Alright, shut the door. Alright, uh, let's see. So we're going to click drop off. Drop the box. We're going to hold F, use our inner thought, and then we're going to go ahead and click place. All right. Objective complete. Deliver. We did that. Contract complete. And 3,120, which means if you use the referral code, you now have... 8,120, or if you got the 1,000 from the ship package, we got like nine, well, almost 10,000 UEC, right? Uh, pretty soon, these we're going to be able to enter these buildings after they're done creating uh, new Babbage. Let's just take a look at this for a second. Look at the look at the wind going up, or I mean the oh God, the smokestacks. This is beautiful. And yes, you can fall. Be careful. It's a long way down. It's beautiful. Look at this. Wow. So, okay, let's go ahead and get back into the ship. Look how, look at this. We're running. I'm sprinting right now. I'm sprinting. That's how heavy the, that's how hard the wind is blowing. I can't wait to get on the ship. 
Gosh, man. Whoa. Dude, that was serious. That was serious. Okay. All right. So we made uh, 3,120 UEC. Um, there's. Let's go over some of the other ways that you can make money. I'm going to come out with another episode on getting started with UEC uh, in the verse um, on the next video that I upload. But let's kind of take a look at the uh, contracts, the other things that we could do to earn money in the verse. And one of, uh, some of those things are there's multiple delivery missions. There's personal, which could give you um, illegal missions. Here's one that you could take for 33,000 UEC. It can be done alone, uh, <clears throat> but it, it's it's really difficult to do alone. And if you do this, you're going to become a criminal, and there's a chance that you're going to be uh, thrown into jail, right? And we're going to make a video on the whole criminal gameplay loop on getting sent to prison and escaping or how uh, the other ways that you can get out of prison, uh, such as doing and serving the time or B, mining to get your time reduced, or C, escaping and having your friends take you to a uh, place to have your crime stat hacked away, and then you're a free man, right? You could be a fugitive. It's a really fun gameplay loop. So with that said, uh, let's go to uh, investigation. These are super fun. I just did one earlier, recorded a video. I don't know if it's uploaded yet, probably not, uh, where I went and I searched for a missing crew of dead five dead crewmen and it was a freelancer that crashed on Ida and uh, it was really spooky and uh, it was really sad to see there was a body that was in front of the freelancer and you could tell how that person died because once you went inside the freelancer the window was all broken up and uh, you could tell that he went through the windshield man when they crashed so horrific and so sad um Investigation missions are, uh, look, missing client, Jerry. Jerry's been missing. Jerry's in a cave. Jerry's dead. I'm sorry. We have to go find Jerry for 4,000 UEC, and we're going to do that on the on the next uh, uh, helpful hints and uh, uh, helpful tips and tricks um, in Star Citizen. I don't know what the show's going to be called, but I want to create videos that help people. Obviously, if you're watching and you've been playing Star Citizen, uh, I didn't cover enough. I know I missed a lot of things that I probably should have. And you didn't learn anything from this video. If you've been playing Star Citizen for a long time, but I do know a lot of people that probably could use a, a little bit of what we covered today in, in this uh, tutorial, a helpful beginners video, whatever you want to call it. Um, but these are fun missions to take. And we're going to do that on the next day. Uh, tips and tricks video. Um, not going to be doing any exploits on this channel. Uh, bounty hunter. Once you take your pro tem, you can, uh, go after bounties. Uh, so it looks like we got one here called UG. So did we get the other guy? Or, I mean, did the other guy get taken out? Okay. The other guy got taken out, right? So let's go back to bounty hunter. And there's another person here. This there's two people now. So this one nine S uh, whatever his name is, and then UG3254. These two guys have done something wrong in the verse. Uh, they're both worth 10,000 UEC. That's 20,000. If you get good at fighting and get at hunting and tracking, you could get these guys, send them to prison, and get 20,000 UEC for, the, for, the, for taking these guys out. Now, typically, these are guys, maybe they killed somebody. Maybe they got a homicide. Maybe it's an accident. Maybe they didn't do anything wrong and they just didn't know how to play the game. Maybe they did the Price of Freedom mission, right? And uh, they didn't know they were going to become bounties or felons. Uh, whatever the case, uh, the system is put here in place so that if somebody is trying to shoot you and kill you in the game when you're trying to do something on your own, they get a mission. And people like me or Defango or somebody else, Gongzo, we get to go hunt these people down and send them to prison for attacking you. It's a really cool system that this game, we police ourselves in this game, right? We, uh, if you want to act up, we're going to lock you up. It's just that simple. So uh, these two are bounties. You can make a lot of money doing that. Now, NPC bounties, they're kind of easy. 
Here's one for 2,500 UEC. You could take that in a war, a Titan. You could take it in a anything, really, and uh, go kill that uh, NPC bounty, right? Um, then there's another one up here for 3,500. So the higher the crime stat, this is a crime stat four. The other bounty was, uh, what was he? He was a um, crime stat three. The higher the crime stat, the harder they are to beat, and they're going to have... They're going to have bros with them, right? They're going to have people that are protecting them. You do not have to kill every single one of the ships around that bounty. You just have to get the bounty. And if you have the call to arms mission like we got, you can actually get money for every single one of those uh, bros he's got with him. NPC bros, right? You can take them all out and get them paid for every one of them. So there's ways to, right there to make money. And then you got mercenary. These are claim jumpers. These are worth 10,000 UEC. I could do these on my own. I can. Uh, sometimes they're harder. Sometimes they're easier. Um, I don't complete every single one that I try. Um, but I don't know if I'm really even trying hard when I fail. Uh, but these are ways to earn tons of money in the verse. Uh, then you've got um, illegal monitors detected. I don't think I've ever done this. Um, but we're, we're going to go through these. Once a week, we're going to pick a gameplay loop. And we're going to go through it. We're going to go through the missions. And we're going to see how they are, how they work. And we're just going to have fun making making some money. So, again, the personal. If you do not have your bounty hunter license. If you do not take your pro tab. The personal tab will show you if you're near, if you're near Hurston or if you're near Crusader. It'll show you box delivery missions that are worth almost 16000 thousand UEC a piece they are good missions you will get a lot of money doing those missions um so keep that in mind uh before you take your bounty hunter license before you do pro tem once you take that pro tem they disappear uh because there's some kind of like virtue thing uh hidden virtue system or something like that um but uh yeah those are good ways but you can get in trouble for running those boxes. Um, and then up here is your accepted. You can see all the missions that you've accepted. You could track certain ones. Um, and then you have your history of what you've done in this particular server, right? It'll show you history. Uh, then you could you got beacons here. So say you want to create a beacon. Say your ship blew up. You're stuck on a planet. You could backspace. But don't. Don't backspace unless you're stuck in a rock. Don't backspace unless you're stuck in a door. You'll thank me later. If you backspace, if you backspace, you are taking away gameplay memories that you will cherish for a lifetime. If you're stuck on a planet or a moon, you could easily backspace and go back to your easy hab on Everest or Port Alasar, wherever. But if you go here in this screen and you make yourself a beacon and you make a personal transport and then you go to destination and then you go to um, Everest Harbor. You pick Everest Harbor because you can get your you can get a new ship there, right? You can pull your ship out. And then you enter a dollar amount, 5,000 or 10,000. And somebody in the server is going to see that. And you hit broadcast beacon, they're going to see it. And they're going to want to come be a hero to you. They're, they're going to come pick you up. And you're going to get into their ship and you're going to tell them about your story. What happened to you? Did you crash? Did someone come and blow up your ship and, th and they thought they killed you, but they didn't? What happened? What's your story? You could tell that to the person who picked you up. But if you backspace, you got nothing to tell nobody. Don't backspace. Create gameplay. Create memories. Use this beacon. You won't be sorry. I've had so much fun meeting people, strangers around the world. Somebody sitting in their room playing Star Citizen, 
in another country. Just accepting my beacon, coming to picking me up. And then we have this conversation together. And we meet and we become friends. And then they join the Discord. And then I talk to them Tuesday through Friday on Twitch. And then we become friends. And then I start to know what their pet's name is, right? And then I start to know what their favorite colors are. When their birthday is. This game brings people together. And that's why I love it so much. So I hope if you're out there and you haven't joined the verse yet, what are you waiting for? Don't believe everyone out there. We're not a toxic community. Join my Discord. Find out. It's down there below. There's a lot of awesome people in there waiting to meet you. And I can't wait to meet you. And with that said, may the verse be with you. And I hope to fly with you soon. This has been Cobra TV. Good night, everybody. Be safe.